from Coral Bay near Northwest Cape up to Broome and stretching across all the way to Townsville in Queensland brings in floods of tourists every year to soak up the sunshine and swim in pristine waters in some of the most desirable beaches in the world. It brings in hundreds of millions of tourist dollars every year which help to support the local communities. But there is something that you are not being told. Something that the locals would prefer that you didn't know about. It is a marine creature so deadly that popular tourist destinations, popular beaches in Queensland were abandoned and $65 million in tourist revenue was lost. So what was it that scared the tourists away? Australia has its fair share of dangerous animals. Great white sharks, crocodiles, taipan snakes, funnel web spiders, and the sea wasp, which is a box jellyfish, which scientists thought, until recently, was the most venomous creature on the planet. So what is this creature, this deadly creature, that scared the tourists away? What is its secret, and why is it so deadly? It is the Irukandji, a type of box jellyfish. It was named after the Irukandji people who used to live on the coastal flats and they would fish between the islands and the estuaries and at the mouth of the rivers. This was where it was first discovered. Very little is known about the Irukandji and its venom, although it was discovered over 50 years ago. It is very small. They can be as small as five millimeters and grow to as large as one cubic centimeter or the size of a sugar cube. It has four fine tentacles which can grow up to a length of one meter. Irukandji jellyfish have the ability to fire stingers from their nematocysts on their tentacles and inject highly toxic venom. They also have nematocysts on their head Scientists are still trying to determine for what useful purpose this is. Many people like to play and touch the head of a jellyfish, but I would not recommend it in the case of the Irukandji. Irukandji jellyfish stings are so severe that they can be fatal, and on average 50 to 100 people are hospitalized every year from Irukandji stings. Some people believe that the sting of an Irukandji is 100 times more potent than a cobra and 1,000 times more potent than a tarantula. What makes the Irukandji so dangerous is that they are small. They can be as little as five millimeters in size. And because they are transparent in water, this makes it difficult for the unsuspecting swimmer to see them. You won't even realize you've been stung by an Irukandji because you don't feel the initial sting. It's a delayed reaction. It takes anywhere between five and 40 minutes, but from five minutes onwards, symptoms may show. Then your body will be experiencing high levels of stress. Your breathing will become rapid. Your blood pressure will shoot through the roof. You'll be in pain. You'll have intense back pain and kidney pain, and you'll have extremely labored breathing. Death can occur in as little as two hours after being stung. Some have managed to hang on for about 12 hours before finally succumbing to the Irukandji. Being stung can cause a rapid exponential change in your blood pressure. Because of the rapid change in blood pressure, it can cause a brain hemorrhage, which then leads to a coma and eventual death. The insidious thing about the Irukandji is that there is no visible sign that you've been stung. It is believed that many more people may have died from Irukandji than stated. This is because their death may be written off as something else, such as a heart attack, a stroke or drowning, simply because they died somewhere else and were not admitted to the hospital where the staff will be aware of the signs of an Irukandji thing. Those who survive suffer from what is known as Irukandji syndrome. It causes excruciating pain 
in the muscles of the arms and the legs and in the back and in the kidneys. There is also a burning sensation on the skin, the face and the eyes, severe headaches and nausea, increased heart rate, soaring blood pressure and a feeling of impending doom. Some survivors have described the pain as being beaten with a cricket bat on the back and in the kidneys and at the same time being repeatedly jabbed randomly all over with a red hot needle. The Irukandji tend to drift inshore when the weather is sunny, peaceful, with a northerly wind, calm seas, perfect conditions for the beach lovers to take a swim. No wonder the word Irukandji is a sensitive word in these top tourist locations. Very little funding has been provided for research into these very small but deadly marine creatures. We will never really know how many people have actually died from an Irukandji sting. Very little is known about the Irukandji, their ecology and the extent of their habitat. Is it possible that climate change and global warming are responsible for the northward spread of Irukandji? because the symptoms of this species are being felt as far north as Japan, the coast of Florida, and as far north as Britain. Are we heading towards an outbreak of the Irukandji? Only time will tell.